In the last couple of videos, we used the format string vulnerability, first of all, to leak out the pi address because we had pi enabled and we wanted to try and find out what the address of the binary was. And then we used it to overwrite an element of the global offset table. In this video, we're also going to be using a format string vulnerability, but we're going to use it to bypass another security protection we haven't really looked at yet, which is canaries. So let's go and jump into it. We'll do our basic file checks first of all. Just to mention, this is compiled this time with the F stack protector all set in. We've got no pi and it's 32 bit, although you can do this in 64 bit if you want as well. And if we have a look at the file type, we'll see it's 32 bit LSB executable. It's dynamically linked and not stripped. Let's have a look with checksec as well. And we've got partial rel row. So we mentioned in the last video when we were overwriting the global offset table, if this was full rel row, we wouldn't have been able to overwrite the entries. We've got stack canaries, which is obviously what we're trying to bypass this time. And then we've got NX enabled, so we won't be able to inject shellcode onto the stack and expect it to execute. But we don't need to worry about pi, so the address is going to stay the same each time the program loads. Before we even look at the source code this time, let's try and run the program. And let's assume that we don't know what the program's going to do. The first thing we'll probably want to do is see can we put in a really long input to overflow the buffer. And we didn't. The reason being is actually looking for the printf format string vulnerability first of all. The second part says, who says gets this dangerous good luck with buffer overflow attack? So it's far more likely to be the buffer overflow. Let's try and overflow the buffer. And we get this message, stack smashing detected, terminated, and then the program has closed down. So that's the stack canary in action. Let's open up the source code and we'll have a look to see what's going on here. This source code is pretty much taken from Ironstone's git book, by the way. There's a section here on stack canaries, so you can go and take a look at this. Again, I've mentioned it a few times, but this is all structured very well for learning uh, buffer overflows and binary exploitation in general. So in terms of our code here, we've got a main function which just calls Vuln. Vuln has a 64 byte character array, so this buffer, and then it's reading into this buffer. So it is using the dangerous gets call here, but it's also using printf without specifying the format, which means we can leak addresses here as well. And then it's going to take another input from us which is going to be a buffer overflow. So basically the goal here is we use the first printf to leak the canary and then we use the second gets call to overflow the buffer making sure that we overwrite the canary with the correct value. And the goal of this buffer overflow is just to reach this hacked function. So it's a return to win challenge. We're just trying to return to this function in order to win. And we've done a few examples of those earlier on in the series so hopefully this will refresh everybody's memory. I just figured that this would be a better example than doing a return to libc attack or something just so we can simplify it and focus specifically on the canary. So let's go and take a look at this in Geardra. Let's go over to our functions first of all, select the main function and we can see the stack canary here. So we've got our, let's rename this to canary. This is where it's taking the random value from and then it's going to call vuln here but basically if we were overflowing the buffer here and the canary at the end when it gets down to return if that canary doesn't equal what it was set to at the beginning it's going to call this stack check fail local so we're going to get that stack smashing detected so essentially if we wanted to start overwriting other variables on the stack or the return address we're going to overwrite that canary so we're going to need to overwrite it with the correct value for our buffer overflow to be successful go into vuln We've got the same thing here, so we've got a canary, we've got our buffer, we can start renaming those things. Now previously we've worked out our offsets by using GDB in that cyclic pattern, but when there's a canary that's a little bit harder to do, but we can actually just have a look at the stack here and, and work it out instead. So we have our return pointer first of all on the stack, we have then our local 8 and you can see it goes down to minus 0x8. We have our canary as well, that actually goes down to minus 0x10. In hex, in decimal, that's 16. And then we've got our buffer as well, which sends it to 0x50. So in hex, to get the hex values, if it was just 8, that would just be 8. But if we have 10, that's 1 times 16 plus 0 times 1, if that makes sense. It's just base 16. And then we can see then if we get down to, if we have all these values on the stack, that's up to 16 bytes. And then we have the buffer of 64 bytes, which is 64 bytes in hex would be 0x40, so 4 times 16. 
and this is 0x50, so 4 times 16 for our buffer, and then 1 times 16 for all this other stuff we have here. So from that we basically know that our canary is going to be 64 bytes in, and then there's going to be another 12 bytes after we write the 4 byte canary in order to get to the return address. Hopefully that made sense, we'll go and try and have a look at this in GDB and see if we can make a bit more sense of it. Just before we do a bit of debugging with GDB, let's also open up our fuzz script, which we've used a couple of times just to loop through the elements on the stack. So we're using that printf format vulnerability to print all the values off the stack. And if we have a look at Ironstone's git book here, they mentioned that in terms of the canary here, we can see that it'll typically look quite random and end in 0, 0, unlike the libc and stack addresses that start with f7 and ff. So let's go back and run the Python script to fuzz it. We could run this and just go and have a look through some of these values to see what ends with 0, 0. Now we have some here, but they started with F7 and FF, which we know isn't what we're looking for. So we keep going. This one looks a bit random. We've got three zeros at the end of that. That actually looks like hex at the beginning. But this one here, B94AB800, so you might want to run it a couple of times and just make sure that each time it runs it's a fairly random looking value ending in zeros. It is again, so we can see it's the offset of 23 it looks like. But we can also use GDB to look at this stuff. So let's open up GDB Pwn Debug Canary. And there is actually a Canary command in GDB, so you can run Canary. We need to run the program first of all. Let's have a look at our functions. So we've got our hacked, we've got our vuln, we've got our main. Let's go and have a look at this hacked function. We'll disassemble it. And we might want to set up some breakpoints around here. So I'm thinking we have our printf here. I'm going to set up a breakpoint there. And we can then go and run that canary command and try and work out, first of all, what the canary is, but then what offset is it at whenever we call that, whenever we use our printf vulnerability to leak the values off the stack. So actually, let's run that first of all. Let me run it. I'm not going to put anything in there. That's us asking for the printf format string vulnerability. And then we'll type canary. We'll see that it looks like it's actually found a canary. So what we can do is have a look on the stack now and see what is the offset of that. So let's do x over 100x. So we'll print 100 elements from the stack pointer. And what was the value? It ended with a900. And here it is right here. So we could actually have a look. So we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and it's the 24th. Bearing in mind that the offset starts at 0, so it's the 23rd element for us. So we could go back and run that fuzz script. Going to have a look. Starting at 0, remember, is the 23rd element? Yes, it looks like it is, that one. So we've identified the offset of the canary. That's good. Let us let me delete the breakpoints. Let's go back and disassemble that. We might also want to try and have a look at the where the canary is compared. So we have this jump if equal. So you can see it's doing the comparison around here for the canary to make sure it still equals what it should equal. And if it does, it'll jump down to vuln plus 128. Otherwise, it's going to say stack check fail local. It's going to call that function. So again, we can break that. We can run the program. Let's just run it normally, first of all. It runs through. We hit that breakpoint. You can see jump not equal, sorry, jump if equal. We've got a tick there, so it is equal. We can hit next if we want to and go and have a look at that. It doesn't really show much, just keeps continuing. All right, that's fine. Let's run it again, and this time we'll overflow the buffer and see what happens when we don't have the correct canary. So we run that, we see we, we've hit this breakpoint. We don't have the tick anymore, notice. And we can see that we've got our A's in here. And what's the canary value? Let me just double check. 1C, 17CC F800 this time. Okay, so we'll hit next. It's going to call this stack check fail local. And you can see we have our A's in here, which we obviously shouldn't have for the canary comparison. Let's just go back up to our disassembled code there and see what it was doing. So we've got a comparison here, jump if equal. What it was actually doing is moving a pointer from what was placed on the stack, so the canary on the stack, which was assigned at the beginning, and it's subtracting what the 
the value that was assigned to the canary at the beginning. Uh, let me explain that a little bit better. So at the beginning, the canary was assigned this value, and at the end, it's going to compare it to see does it still equal that value. Well, that's exactly what it's doing there. So it's taking the canary on the stack and it's it's subtracting the value that it originally assigned to it, and then it's going to see basically is it zero. If it's zero, then obviously they're the same. If not, then the canary isn't correct. So that's basically what's happened there. That's why we don't actually see the canary in the parameters here because it's subtracting from the original value. Okay, hopefully I explained that okay. Let's go and take a look at the scripts that I've put together. And you can see we've got some breakpoints actually set in the GDB script. So set to break at those two parameters. One was the printf format, so we can have a look to make sure the offset of the canary is correct. Let me know where it is on the stack at the time. The other one is at the comparison with the canary, so we could go and debug that. And then the final one is at the return instruction, where we want to just see is our buffer overflow and everything lined up correctly. And then we also print out the canary as well. Just so if you're debugging this with GDB using the Pwn Tools script, that'll make it a little bit easier. And what do we have here? So we've got a canary offset at 64. Remember that we found that by looking at the stack here, and we could see that we've got our 64 byte buffer right above that here we've got our canary we're gonna do 64 well first of all we're gonna leak that canary off the stack we know that it was a 23rd element we found that with GDB and with the fuzzing script we are going to set up a payload which has got 64 A's or whatever you wanna put in there as long as we pad it out with 64 characters and then we're gonna overwrite the canary with the canary that we leaked to make sure it's the correct value and then remember that we also had another 12 bytes before we were going to get our return address. So we've just padded that out to the return address where we're going to return to win, i.e. return to the hacked function. And that's it. We just send it off after we get the little tongue face and then go interactive. Although we don't really need to do this because it's simply return to win. We're not actually getting a shell this time. So let's try and run it. We get through to wait how did you get here so that was our goal was to get into that hacked function but that could have very easily just been a return to libc or any other kind of attack that you can do with a buffer overflow and you can see here it did leak out our canary we just printed out the canary value and if we go and have a look for that on the stack we can see it here sorry in the payload we can see it here the 4e437070 so we've got all of our 64 bytes of padding, we've got a canary, we've got 12 more bytes of padding, and then we have the return address of the hacked function. And that's it for the canary challenge. So that's all I've actually got put together at the moment for this. I'm going to probably add some more videos, some more challenges as time goes on. I'm thinking maybe we'll do something where we have to use ROP to overwrite maybe the dot data section with the bin h string and then call that from there. But if you, if you want to find some more advanced buffer overflows, I have linked down here. I've linked some good resources. If you click on more here, this will go back to my main GitHub resources page where there's lots of CTF resources and pwn challenges and stuff. Lots of videos by some great creators and useful tools. If you also have a look in the GitHub, there is a ROP Emporium series that I did here. So this is a series of challenges that are available. I made a video series on them. You can see this was over a year ago and my video editing skills and video making skills and you know the quality of my microphone and stuff aren't great. Having said that, I think these are some of my most technical videos. So if you go and actually have a look through some of these payloads, I commented the exploits in a lot of detail because I was trying to learn this stuff at the time and the best way of trying to understand something is just go through and see if you can explain it. That's what I'm doing in these videos. I'm going through to see if I know how to explain things and if I don't know how to explain them then I obviously don't understand them properly. So you can do the same thing with write-ups, you can do the same thing with comments. You know, put together an exploit script, go through and comment it and if you find you're getting to points where you don't know what to comment, you don't know what that's actually doing, then you've got something else to go and learn. But yeah, check out some of these. I'll try and add to this series as we go. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.